guys what's going on it's Lara and welcome to my channel today is the the video you've been waiting for no but this is the video like no other video on YouTube um, when I was looking to apply to be a 911 dispatcher the first thing that I did was came to YouTube and typed in critty call test and I didn't find anything so what I'm going to do with you all today is I'm going to share with you um, just some tips and tricks. Not really tricks, but just some tips and some information on the Credit Call Test. So if you're interested in that, then definitely stay tuned. Alright guys, so if you're watching this, that means that you must have some interest in being a 911 dispatcher and you're about to take the Credit Call Test. Um, maybe you received that email that says, hey... We got you scheduled in two weeks to come and take the critical test. There's really no preparation for this test. Just come and take it. Anybody else get that email? I know I did. And I got freaked out. Um, I've taken this test um, a few times because, uh, like I told you all, I applied to work in Dallas. And um, I withdrew my application because there were some things going on with their system. Um, they had a like a little issue with the 911 dispatcher and it was like in court and so I didn't want to be involved in that. Um, and then I took the critical call test again when I applied for the agency that I worked at before. And then I recently took the critical call test again um, as I'm applying to a new agency. So I passed it all three times and all three times it was exactly the same there was only one difference in one of the critical tests and I'll tell you about that so the first thing what is critical um, critical is just um, a program that law enforcement agencies use to determine if you are skilled enough or if you are pre-qualified enough to do the job it involves things like multitasking, decision making, map reading, just a, just to name a few. So that test is going to grade or analyze if you can do those things. And if you are able to do those things, then you're able to move on to the next step in the hiring process. If not, um, I know in Dallas or any other agency that I worked for, there was like a six month period that you have to wait before you could take the test again. So that's what Credit Call is. It gives you kind of real life uh, scenarios through that computer system, through that computer program. Now the test is cons it's like made up of about 18 different modules. Um, each agency has uh, the authority, like in their version of the Credit Call exam, they can remove and add things at their discretion. I know when I took the critical call test for Dallas, they didn't have an area for typing. But the agency that I worked for did have an area to type to see how fast you typed. And then the agency that I just recently applied for, they didn't have a specific area that they tested your typing speed, but they did kind of test your typing speed through other modules of the program. So it kind of goes like that. So what I'm going to do is based on my memory, which is okay, not all that good, um, I made up a little list of, and you, now I know you probably can't see that, but anyway, I made up a little list of the things that I remember from the critical call test. So what I'll do is kind of tell you about each different module that was there. So the first two, and they're all kind of grouped in twos. You have one where you're just kind of reading and then you're reading and typing and then you have somebody talking and you're typing. So the first one that I remember is decision making. So what that is, is you'll hear a beep in your ear set because they give you a headset. You'll hear a beep in the headset and then in the bottom corner you'll see like a scenario. Um, for example, there's smoke coming out of the windows of a building. So you have to determine if you'll be dispatching the police, fire, EMS, or utility services. So with that, you would just simply click fire and then you will go on to the next question. So you have a few of those, maybe about five to 10. I'm not that exactly sure because um, I was just trying to hurry up and finish and I ran out of time. Um, so then the next module um, is the decision making audio. So you have someone talking, 
um, there's just like a recorded person and they're giving you some information and you're typing that information in as they're giving it to you and then you'll hear a beep and then in that bottom corner that those scenarios will come back up a man is having a heart attack and you have about 15 seconds to respond to that scenario that's going on while you're still um, working on the other thing while you're still typing and that person is talking my best suggestion to you is is to memorize what they're saying like what they're typing I mean what they're saying that you're supposed to type and then go ahead and click the little button because you don't have 15 seconds so just kind of pace yourself don't just be so nervous about it that you can't think straight um, but just pace yourself to get it done it's not really that hard but it is what it is then you have like a typing along section so what you're going to be doing is someone is going to be well the first part of it you are just typing out what you see you'll have a first name a last name address a VIN number a license plate number and a, a date of birth or phone number something like that so you'll just you're basically just copying what you see copy, typing what you see typing what you see then in that same um then the next module you have the type what is it the typing along audio so you have someone actually speaking to you and guys let me preface this by saying this is not like an actual 911 call okay um when people call 911 they don't talk slow and clearly they don't hardly spell their names uh, and they don't want to repeat themselves so this critty call test you have someone talking slow, they're speaking clearly, and they're spelling everything. So they'll say, my name is John, J-O-H-N, Cannon, C-A-N-O-N. I live at 1234 Red Street. That's R-E-D Street. Um, 90% of the time when you have callers that call into 911, they will not give you that um much detailed information like how to spell their name and things like that don't get spoiled by that critical call test <laughs> no no joke so you have the typing along and then as you're doing that as well you will have the little beep that comes in and you'll have to click um you know it's a down power line who do you call you know and then you you know go back up to doing whatever else it was you were doing so then you have uh, what I call the following along section. Um, you have someone talking and you're following along with them and you're just typing in the information that they give you. They say, hi, my name is Mr. Bryant. Um, so you type in the last name. I live at 5678 Powershot Drive. That's P-O-W-R-S-H-O-T Drive. My phone number is 214-555-5555. Um, so you're putting all of that information in and then you'll go to the next question. Yeah, you'll keep doing that until, you know, that module is done. Meanwhile, you still have the per the beep popping up and then going down. The next one I called, um, memorization from the screen. Um, <laughs> and so what that is, is they put something up on the screen, like a series of numbers. Um, there might be six to eight numbers that they put up on, six to nine numbers that they put on the screen. Usually those are probably like license plate numbers. Um, and so you put that 5532211, then you type it out. But here's the kicker with that one. There is a time where they will, oh, no, 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 disregard. Okay, so then you have that one. So then on the audio version of that memorization, they will say the license plate number or whatever series of numbers and letters that they give you. They'll say it and then there'll be a five second pause. Then you can type it in. That for me guys was like the hardest part just because I'm so used to just kind of going along that it was hard for me to like go along like to remember like nine numbers and then type it but I passed it so it obviously ain't that hard um let's see then you have 
a number recall so they'll give you seven digits like a phone number they'll give you a seven digit phone number and then you just type that in and that goes really fast you don't have to wait the five seconds thank god you don't have to wait the five seconds for that one um, it just goes right away let's see then you have map reading so the map reading is really really simple guys i know that a lot of people don't know how to read maps um because we all have gps's and map reading is just not something that we're kind of used to doing i know how to read a map only because back in the day you know um we didn't have gps's right so we had to look up on the map and anytime we go on a trip or anything, my daddy would have me or my brother to look at his little maps code booklet. Anybody know what one of those are? How at me. Um, my daddy have us look in his map code book and kind of find the directions of how to get there. So I always knew north, south, east, and west. But I always got a little turned around. But on the map, guys, there's a compass already there. So it's got north, south, east, and west already on it. So you don't really have to worry about that. And then the questions aren't like which way is north or which way is west it is you're at the hospital in the southernmost part of the hospital how would you what's the most direct route to the high school and like i said guys there's a map it's a small map probably got six streets on it three going east and west three going north and south like very very simple and then it even has laid out um you go like in that multiple choice answers it says you know two blocks north one block west and then north one block so if you can kind of navigate that you got that part that's really easy too guys don't be afraid of the map test the answers are written below so you just have to basically go to the answers and see which one is the right one for you there's also um, an area for reading comprehension um, there will be a little paragraph, not like not anything major, maybe about two or three sentences, like legit, very small paragraph. And um, with that, it'll ask you a question like, what's the summary or what's the main idea of this passage? So you're basically just telling the main idea. So you don't have to, you know, go like what was the cause and effect or anything like that. Basically, what is this story about? Um, what is it mainly about? And some, some of them, none of them were really challenging, guys. Um, but it's just asking it just wants to know can you understand what is happening in a scenario that is written um, and then the last section is spelling um, so there are some different types of spelling I guess quizzes a test that they give you they'll give you a sentence and they'll want you to fill in the sentence with the correctly spelled word for example um, one of the questions said the man used oh, i'm sorry not the questions the sentence is said the man used illicit drugs spell illicit so you'll just type in i-l-l-i-c-i-t -I illicit illicit um or there are people hanging outside of the apartment complex spell there um, so it's just like that you have a regular one where you're looking at the sentence and then you have a verbal one where the audio one where someone's talking to you and you're typing the word that you need to spell. Um, let's see. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Okay, that's all I can really remember, guys, about the Critical Call Test. I think that is pretty much everything that gives you, like, a really good summary or a really good understanding of what the Critical Call Test is and really what to expect on it. Um, it's not really hard, but a lot of people do fail it, and I think that that's because they just get so nervous um, because they don't know what to expect. So, when taking the Critical Call Test, just try to stay calm. Um, just like you would if you were taking a 911 emergency call. Just try to keep yourself calm so that you can really focus on what it is that you're doing versus what's coming next. Focus on what's there right then and then you'll move on to the next things. Don't think about what's coming ahead. Focus on what it is that you're doing now and then you got it. Um, so I know that there are some people out here who are getting ready to take the Critical Call Test. So I want to encourage you to bust it open, bust it open, because it's really not that hard. And if you have failed it um, previously, I hope that with this information and then the knowledge that you have from previously taking the test, um, that if you are looking to take it again, that you feel encouraged in doing so. 
I'm so excited that you guys watched. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Also, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to click the little notification bell so that you can receive notifications whenever I post a video. All right, guys. Hope to see you all soon. Take care. Pass that critical call test, and I'll see y'all soon.